All right. Hey, Tony. I'm on. Yes, you're on live. There's no audio issues today. We are good to go. Yeah. You can't hear me? Electronics I can hear I can hear you. Oh maybe it's just delayed, huh? Delayed uh audio. Well you're Lee Maiden. How are you? Yes, you're Lee Maiden. My sister over there. Very nice. You're Lee. Yay. All right, my brother, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, well, I'm here. <laughs> well, I'm going to follow your lead. Okay, all right. Well, basically, um, we'll just kind of rehash some of the things we talked about last time and uh, maybe add a, add a couple more, you know, um, uh, some, some things that we uh, didn't touch on last time. But first of all... Um, um, we thank God for the Memorial Day that just came uh, and we just celebrated. I hope uh, you had a wonderful uh, uh, Memorial Day. Yeah, it's good. A day, to, a day to reflect. Yes, 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 sir. Okay. Um, one question that I know most people in Hollywood, uh, actors, producers, directors, or uh, people in, in, in entertainment, I'm sure one question in their mind that is something that they would like to know is, how do you use the law of attraction to manifest um, things in Hollywood? Is it, is, 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 it, is it even possible? You don't actually use the law of attraction it is what it is and that's just how it is period if you are uh, acquainted with it or have knowledge of it and know how it works then you can utilize it but the law of attraction is like gravity in air it hmm. just is regardless of whether you are aware of it know of it consciously use it or not you what you put out into the universe or think about uh, is going to bring more of itself to you so the law of the universe works the way it works regardless of whether one consciously uses it or not it's like saying well how are you going to use the air you breathe as long as you're breathing you, you're going to use it to you not use it. So think about the law of, the attra of, of attraction is to be cognizant of it, to understand what it is, and then to direct your thought process, your intentions, your intent, what you feel, what you want to become, what you're becoming in a direction that you can attract more of what it is you're attracting. Mm -hmm. So the person feels like, I'm just attracting bad luck. And, and then that's the energy or vibration that they have. They will attract more bad luck. So it's, it's about becoming what it is you want to attract so that the law of attraction does what it does in a more favorable way if that's what you want to accomplish, utilizing the law that you now are cognizant of, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. I guess. I guess the question now is, what is the law of attraction? The law of attraction is basically, wherever you put out comes back, based on what you, based on the energy you put out and what you're thinking. It's like it's like this spiritual magnet hmm. that you pull in what it is you're thinking or in a deeper way, I'm trying to make it as simple as I can. What you, the, the, the frequency that you're vibrating to, like, and that's too complicated to use frequency and get into the different hertz and different things. But 
is basically you you get what you attract. You know, if if it's like what our grandparents and grandmothers told us, God don't like ugly. If you act in ugly, ugly gonna follow you. That's the law of attraction. Or if you are the birds of a feather flock together, that's the law of attraction. And that's really the best way to put it. Birds of a feather flock together. You attracting what it is you you are you're putting out. So in a simple you know, I, I think our, our grandparents are law of attraction and spiritual gurus. It's just that now all this stuff is being, you know, told in a little more sophisticated way that matches the times, but it's the same. Hmm. Wow, excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, I, uh, I had a conversation with a gentleman today that um, was so full of, um, I guess, um, a negative vibe. You know, he he's pretty much... Um, this is the kind of words that was coming out of his mouth, you know. Um, I am in so much pain. I cannot do better. I can't stand. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do that. So um, I, it got to a point I just couldn't take it anymore, right? And I, I wanted to just tell him that yeah, you need to watch what you're putting out because that's what you attract. You, 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 you pretty much... Um, you off, but I want to say when you said I, when you said I can't, I can't, then you said I couldn't take it anymore. So you already attracted it with the can't and your couldn't. Hmm. So actually, huh. he, he actually attracted it. But keep going. I want to okay. That. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, at first I felt it was not my place to um, tell him how to order his conversation to because that's what. He, whatever he's putting out is what he attracts. But so I got to got to a point. I just had to say something, right? And so he he said, "Well, I can't I can't help it because I've already I've already um, paid for my coffin because I know I want to I want to die and and this pain is too much. This this life is just too difficult." I'm like, "Oh, good lord!" You know, inside of me, I was saying, "Wow, this is so true that." Um, we 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 bring whatever you know we um get in life or upon ourselves well some things just happen that we don't bring upon ourselves but just happen because there's randomness there's div div divinity there's accidents there's many possibilities as according to the uh the quantum law and anything can happen so some things we don't bring upon ourselves but how we respond to the things that occur mm -hmm. are, are what, de what defines this but go ahead hmm. Right. Hmm. okay um um well anyways that i just want i just wanted to 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 touch on that a little bit because um you know just i don't i don't I'm, I'm I'm sure you know who Joseph or you've heard of Joseph Murphy, right? He's he's Joseph uh, Campbell. No, Joseph Murphy. He he's very big on on the subconscious mind. Uh, okay, the, now, I'm not here to Joseph Mur Murphy. Oh my goodness, Joseph Murphy is. Um, I, I've learned a lot about the subconscious and the conscious mind uh, from him. Um, I think he's the book. I, I, I might have a copy of his book here. Yeah, the power of your subconscious mind. This is a great, awesome book, right? So, so, so. Um, but anyways, um, what what? Great is here. Hello, Magdalena. Buenos noches, Magdalena. Como estás, my my friend? One of the great art, one of the greatest artists of our time. Oh. She is a brilliant painter. She's a painter. He is a, not just he is like like Picasso. <laughs> Picasso, wow, that's great. That is awesome. <laughs> so, well, uh, pe pe people like her, right? Um, I, I'm sure she gets her inspiration from um, um, from um, using her imagination, right? Which, 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 uh, what's um, um. 
Oh goodness, what's his name? Didn't do, 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 do. Uh, the guy that very that talks about imagination, Neville, Neville Goddard, right? Neville Goddard. I'm, I kind of want to want to want to touch on on um, different um, aspects of our subconscious um, imagination. Because this whole thing is 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 tied up in um, but well, you, well, we, we, we'll tie it up in a, in a second, right? Um, when you use your subconscious your your subconscious mind to create, right? How does it work? How does your subconscious mind work? Correct. Yeah. I don't know if I have, can give you a good answer to that other than to say it's kind of like the law of the universe question mm -hmm. that certain things just do what they do. And in your subconscious, like when you're sleeping and when you are in between sleep and awake and that deeper divine part of you, it has ideas, it has different things. And you're really able to tap into it when you're meditating and you clear your mind for those moments of meditation and it's just you, no noise, no anything, and you're tapping into your subconscious and an idea or an inclination or a thought will come to you to make a call, to make this or do that. Or when you're in that, that awake and asleep in between that dream state where you can hear that, that the deeper part of yourself or the higher part of yourself, or both of those parts of yourself tell you things or you, you get these ideas or feelings. You know, the consciousness is what you're aware of because you're thinking about it. Subconsciousness is what you may not be aware of, but the deeper part of you and that uh, source part of you that's connected with the divine, that's your, your gateway to that. Okay. You know, that that is so true. I guess I guess the the part that we have control over is our consciousness, hey, right? Hey, Tasha's and, cuisine. That's my little niece over there joining in. Hey, Tasha. The, um, and she's a master chef. She can cook anything. Oh, one! And wow. She's a, she's a master chef. She's a master chef and a model. You say? And, and a mommy. Oh, and a mommy. Okay. Yeah. All right, maybe we'll do a cooking show with her one day. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, I guess your uh, the the well the the conscious part of of the mind is what we have control. That is why it's so important that you control what you let through your conscious mind because that's what that's what. Um, sends the message to the subconscious because the subconscious is what you are not even the sub, huh? the subconscious is actually sending a message to the conscious mind and the, the subconscious has a mind of its own actually you know you can send something to your subconscious mind doesn't mean your subconscious mind receives it your subconscious is exists while you are awake and when you're not, the subconsciousness is not even necessarily attached to your body per se. It's part of your connection to the divine. So it, it actually sends you messages because your consciousness, you're aware of certain things, but your, your subconscious, and, and I could be wrong, but your subconscious is as powerful as you interpret its powers to be. It's like... If you believe your subconscious is limited to conforming to the thoughts of your consciousness, then that's a subconscious that's not so deep. But your subconscious, if it's connected to all that is, which is an unlimited uh, source of knowledge, is even deeper. And hello there, Donna. That's Donna out in Palmdale, Lancaster, tuning in. Hey, Donna. <laughs> okay. Well, um, what I think we will do is um, we'll probably do the subconscious and and uh, and uh, the conscious mind 
on another on another platform on an, another day but i i think i think i i have a good knowledge of conscious and subconscious you know why tony um i'm not saying this you know you you have a good point you you said a good um you, you said some good I stuff right I, I, I could be wrong. That's just yeah why, you know, just thinking about it well well this well what would well, well, definitely, we do have one mind, right? One mind is one universal mind, but the mind, the one mind, has different parts to it. That's the conscious, subconscious, and there's the superconscious. Okay, but then, but the this the the subconscious is just like driving, right? When you learn to dr the first time you try to drive, if you've never driven before. You know, you 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 is just so confusing. You just too much stuff going all, all around. But after you've learned to drive, if you know however long it takes you, two months, three months. Now, after a year, you can drive without even you know paying attention to where the gear or the brake is because it it, it has taken your subconscious has taken over. It's the same thing as walking or tying your shoe or wearing our clothes. Things what you do when you do things over and over and over. Anything you do without thinking is the subconscious that is functioning. Well, I, I'm going to beg to differ a little bit. I'm going to challenge you and say, <laughs> I'm going to say that okay. falls under the heading of familiarity. When you have familiarity, you're able to do stuff without thinking about it. And it could be your subconscious, but if it was your subconscious, your subconscious would kick in from day one. But once you become familiar with the, the stick shift, the, 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 how the doors go, then you consciously, you consciously are still doing it because you're doing it to where you're able to drive. And it's a conscious thing. Because if, if something pops up, you're aware. Your subconscious kicks in when you say, I'm not going to get in that left lane and you don't get in that left lane and a car gets in that left lane when you could have gotten that left lane and died or your subconscious says, you know what? I'm going to pull over right here and, uh, and check my tire and you pull over and check your tire and there's a big fat nail in your tire. So that's kind of like your subconscious guiding you while you're in the familiarity of driving and, you, and you're doing it without thinking about it, but you're still conscious. Because your our consciousness still has more power than we give it. If we give stuff to the subconscious too quick, we, we're not giving it our, it's like we only use 2% of our brains. So we still got 98% of the brain to function. So a lot of these things that we think about are subconscious could go to the 3%, the six percent, the nine percent, the fifteen percent of just our conscious brains, because we still have so much more to go consciously. That's just me. I'm just saying. Okay, let's 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 um, look at it from a different angle. You know, they say man is a product of his environment. If um, and the reason why is like if you grow up in an environment that is poor. And all you saw all your life growing up is poverty and lack and limitation. And this, that's the kind of words, you know, your, either your parents or, or, well, we learn from our parents, our environment and our extended family. You know, that's how, that's the, that's the whole makeup of, of any human being. Now, all the stuff when p parents and people tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that, you I'm can't do this, hey you know. Brother Rod, you, Rod, you. Hey, Rod, my little brother just joined us. Uh, oh, hi, Rodwell. Rod, is that Rodwell Sr.? Yes, my little brother. Hey, oh, wow. Rod. Welcome, welcome. So, so when, 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 um, um, when, when, you see, that's the, the when you, your, uh, a, a parent tells a child, you know, I can't afford it or you can't afford it or you can't have this because, you know, um, we don't have the money. You see, those are things that deposits in the subconscious. And when the child grows up, that's how they function based on those things that have been deposited in the subconscious. Now, 
See, most winners, right, were trained to be winners from child, from childhood. And they end up becoming super achievers because, okay, let me, let me, in an, an, let me put it this in another way. Let's say a kid that was raised in a very wealthy home, right? Do you know that this kid does not know what it means to be broke or to be poor? He has no consciousness of being poor because he has never experienced it. But those, but those are also the kids who use a lot of drugs and shoot themselves. And well, well, pay, so. well, 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 that, that, that may be, that may be, that may be Tony. That may be Tony, but but yeah, you go into uh, one other extreme. But I'm talking about kids that you know that don't don't have any consciousness of poverty, right? It happens because they were never they never learned poverty growing up, right? So they have a consciousness, you know, they 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 they, they have no limitations in their thinking because their their subconscious mind. You see, more, most people, okay, let me, let me, I'm trying to come use different examples. Okay, this, this is, this is um, uh, um, an example of a, bu a businessman, right, that um, was in sales. He, he could only make $5,000, right? And any time he's put in a place where he could have access to make more money, he ends up making five thousand dollars. So um, his his um, his coach asked him, right, Bobby, what is going on? You know, I gave you all the tools, everything to succeed, put you in a, in a nice territory. Why is it that you you have a ceiling? So that's when he revealed that, you know, when he was growing up, his parents told him that he would never amount to anything. You know, he would never he would never be rich. He would never. So you see. This, those subconscious messages that was deposited in, in Bobby controlled him, even in, 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 as an adult, regardless of all the all the all the um, all, all the um, all, all the tools he was given, his mind just keeps coming back to being broke. So that's how powerful the subconscious mind can control. and go into okay. his heritage and go into his ancestral roots and his cellular roots, you'll find that there's generations of greatness in his subconscious that are there as well. And what his consciousness is choosing to tap into are the recent deposits from his parents are from people, but from his great, 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 great grandfather and great, great, great grandmother, they say, boy, you are great. You are strong. You are a true genius. But he hasn't tapped into that. But he, because he never, he never heard it. He never heard those words. He's going to be, he's going to. He hasn't heard it in his consciousness. Correct. His subconsciousness he goes. So when he's able to make the connection. I sound like my father now, but he's able to make the conscious connection between that deeper level of subconsciousness, or you might even call it super consciousness, then he is empowered to become the superhero that he is to himself. Because everything that is, is in your subconscious. It's now what you tap into. So now we have to consciously awaken this brother to, to where he understands who he is, and then he'll be able to listen beyond those messages that are in his subconscious. Okay, you said something very profound here. You said... Hello, Victor Orlando. Victor Orlando has joined you. Victor Orlando. Okay, Victor Orlando, welcome. So, I'm okay, a music man. he's a music man? He is. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, anyways, this is this is um, <laughs> this is this is some very very powerful conversation, Tony. Um, I want I want I just want to know do you, do you want me to go in another direction or you want to continue on this in this line of, of thought? It, it, I'm gonna just say it's 
your show. I'm just going where you go, and I'm offering some rebuttal to uh, so we can we just dive it in. I'm just giving you another perspective on what you say. So I'm just like, you know, I'm having fun with you. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, <clears throat> the the um, let's let's describe this another way, right? You you know the the GPS of a of a of a, of a plane. When you set you know the GPS to go from uh, or the autopilot to go from let's say from um, Los Angeles to Hawaii, right? The plane might take off from Los Angeles and mid air hit some turbulence and some shaking and divert. That plane will without a doubt, find back its bearing and take you to Hawaii. Now, that is how the subconscious mind works. When you set the subconscious mind, and you can set the subconscious mind, um, there's three ways you can, you can set, the, I mean, set the sub, sub, subconscious mind in operation. One is by repetition. Two is by hypnosis, and hypnosis is very powerful. That's what happens, like you know, when you. you... Let, let, let me throw. Let me throw one thought in there. Okay. So when you set the destination from the from the plane to go to Hawaii, the subconscious mind is already in Hawaii. It's already arrived. Correct. The conscious mind is what takes the journey to get to get there. That goes off the course, on the course. And it's becoming aware. The subconscious mind is already it's already done in the universe. So now you're consciously taking the trip to where it is you have to go. Well, th that is true. That is true. But but see now, you know how that works though. That how that works though is by you know when the Bible says with faith. All things are possible. That is how things, that's how, you know, the subconscious mind might be there already. But if you waver in your faith, you control that destiny. Do you know, you, do you believe that nothing is, nothing is. It's got nothing to do with faith because you hit turbulence. So turbulence threw you off course. And whether you have faith or not, it, the turbulence is what makes the journey. So now you're like you're shaking up, and you but you still don't have a resolve to go, to continue. But the turbulence is part is, is the, I guess that's the symbol symbolizes the stuff we go through in life. But but we still we have, it's our commitment to the journey, whether it's faith or not. I'm committed to get to Hawaii, and I know I'm gonna get there, but I got to do with this turbulence right about now. And that's a conscious effort. Okay. Do, would you say... All conscious. Would you say some things are preordained or in life? Is there any, anything like preordination or predestined? Yes and, yes and no. Because we're, we're, we're spiritual beings in a physical world getting to be we put a lot of stuff on God and a lot of responsibility on God, but it's us making the decisions. When we become more tapped in to d divine thinking, then we might make better decisions, but we get to create who we'll be. Everybody's destined for some form of greatness, but it's really up to us to take responsibility to, to get on that plane to Hawaii and wherever your Hawaii is and make decisions and our life can't always be on autopilot we got to actually get in there and fly the plane because when it's on autopilot then we're not even thinking we've given the wheel to somebody else and we can easily say you know it was their fault but it's our experience in this life to become who we are and you can choose like i don't think a person was destined to be poor their whole life they might end up in this situation, and there's many different rationales 
that we could get into about it, but I'm not going to go there right now. But we have a responsibility to create who we will be. And that's a conscious effort. Okay. Conscious. Uh, I agree with you. Um, I guess um, it's James Allen that said it that uh, uh, man man is made or unmade by himself. We we yeah we we make or unmake um, our destiny by our thinking. Um, James, I guess he, he the book he wrote um, was as a man thinketh. Now that book is is um, is a very small book, but very very deep um, in in um, in um, in in knowledge, right? And that's supposed uh, to be a small book. It's, it's funny because as a man think, that could be the whole book right there. As a man think, and have the rest of it blank pages because he said enough right there. As a man think, so he is. <laughs> the rest of the pages that that is so true. That is so true. And and what you just said now that we put a lot on God. It's, it's interesting that um, that is how um, a lot of, you know, people function in the universe. You know, when things go right, we say God. When things go wrong, they say devil. But, do you know, there's no devil in the universe. Devil or evil is all in the imagination of human beings. We make devil or based on how what we think. There's no devil. Well, it's, all, it's all symbolic of energy. You know, it's, it's just another way of saying darkness and light, left and right, yin and yang, and opposite. So everything is about energy. So it's a it gives that energy a name, a function, a, a purpose. And even when people talk about Lucifer, Lucifer is another word for light, and it's a light bearer. So yeah, I think people really just got to get hip to the, the God inside of them. And really take responsibility hmm. for what they want to become in this life and go after it. Because everybody says the same thing. All the spiritual books say the same thing. Hmm. That you can go out and be what you got to be. Give God the glory. Put God first. And all that really means is it's, it's the God in you. It's, it's the God that you're, that's in your your subconsciousness is the, is the spirit of God. It, it's the spirit of the divine. So when you're able to tap into it, you tap it into the true goodness that you are, and you're manifesting your higher self with your lower self. But I just want you to give more credibility and credence to your conscious mind. Hmm. Because again, we're only using 5% of our brain, and if we jump right to subconsciousness, we still got 95% of consciousness that we haven't even tapped into. So I'm really pushing you to stay and make your conscious mind more powerful before you give it over to the subconscious. Because the subconscious, because you're talking about going from subconscious to superconscious, but your consciousness is so much powerful. Because even when a person's in a coma, what are they? They are conscious. Right. They're just not able to communicate fully. But a coma is still consciousness. It's not even subconsciousness. It's still in that Three to four percent we're not using. Hmm. And look, oh, look at hey, Parth, Parth Karani. See, that's a young, brilliant mind. I met him on a train. Hmm. He's now in college, and he's a young genius. Hey, Parth. Hey, Parth. Parth is a genius. Wonderful. Hey. So go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. No, no, you go ahead. I mean, that 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 that's that's that that's very that's very true. What you're talking about the, right there. Um, see, that's why, see, the, the consciousness is very, very important. And, and, and I by Regina. I don't want to leave you out. Hello, Massage by Regina. I'm sorry. Okay. I can say hi to everybody. Yeah, yeah, the consciousness is very, very important because, um, um, like, like you said earlier, human beings use, um, I think you said, um, 2% of the brains. Is that what you said? Which... You got, you got to be on it now because Juan Minifield just joined. He's going to end up being the governor of, of his state where, where he moved to down south. He is the first brother to have a, a, a store on the Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. He's a good, he's a good man. So oh, wonderful. I'm sorry to what, that, but I can acknowledge him. What kind of store does he have on Rodeo Drive? He has the first upscale black-owned store in Rodeo Drive a few years ago. Upscale what? Clothing or what? Jewelry? Yeah, he, he runs 
was our, you know, he's our Giorgio Armani. Oh, okay, designer clothing, okay. So he just, so he just, I, you know, I just like to say hey to everybody when they join in. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay, well, um, yeah, what I was saying, you know, was basically, I think uh, the person that really talked a lot about this kind of thing was Earl L. Nightingale, L. L. Nightingale. Uh, who, yes, yes, who said, um, I mean, science has, um, they, they have um, concluded that we use very, very little, I think uh, only less than, less than five or less than 10% of our brain, of the human brain, right? So, so when you're able to do tele telepathy and able to move items with your hands in your mind, that's going to be your consciousness, not your subconsciousness. So at some point, we're going to get evolved to that level. And that's a conscious thing. So I'm really, hey, my brother, I'm really into your consciousness. Hello, Rose, to Rose Parker. Yeah, the, con the consciousness is very important. But, but see, but when we learn to operate with our higher faculties, then the consciousness becomes more, we use the consciousness the way it's ordained to be used. We get more... Uh, but meditation, meditation is the bridge to your higher consciousness. We have to get to that bridge where we can stand and walk across to it. So through meditation and prayer, but really through meditation and freeing the mind and closing our, and blanking our mind, we're able to tap into our deeper selves. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe um, you want to share with us uh, how do you meditate? in a quiet place and you think about nothing, nothing, no job, no nothing, nada, zilch, for 15, 20 minutes, think of nothing. That is and very hard, Tony, you know that, right? Because the, well, I'm, I'm telling, well, I'm, it's unfamiliar, I, and of course it's not easy. But if you can get three, three or four minutes of, of, of that emotional silence and quiet in there, that's a start. You know, you get a little bit of time. Well, and I, I do agree with you about meditation, but what I, what I, I'm just giving you um, the the facts that quieting the mind is one of the hardest thing in the universe. Even Henry Ford says says it that thinking is one of the hardest thing on earth. But I don't. I, I don't I, that when you accept that Henry Ford also says if a man thinks he's gonna fail he's right correct that's my favorite Henry Ford quote uh -huh. when, when we accept that as our fact it becomes that and, and again that's what you said earlier on tapping into it what you believe what you say so you can't in, one one must look at it as it's not hard. It's unfamiliar, and I get a little more. Familiar well, with well, it. you, you, you. Well, okay. I see. I see where you're coming from. You already, you already I'm treating. You already treating, right? I'm, you, I'm just using more of my brain to do things that the normal average person can't do because my brain is not convinced of that reality. Well, well, you, you. Okay, you're already tr treating or solving the 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 problem, but the the, the reality of the ma of the issue is that. Thinking is one of the hardest things in the on earth. That's why so few people do it. And if you can and and if you can do it, and, and there's a way to think, if you can learn how to think, you can solve any problem in the universe. So he is. He just said that there's a book on it. He wrote a whole book about thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, may, may, I think we will talk about how to think in, in another episode because um, it, it, it's it's um, it's amazing how we are we're touching some big 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 it, sub it, sub topics. It's not, how, it's, it's not how you think; it's what you think. It's what you think, and thinking is wonderful. You know, it's like, but. Sometimes you just gotta slow down. I'm on my couch, my, my, my feet are up, and if you just slow down. And, and even the word problem, when you look at the words inside a problem, you find the word probe. 
the, a problem enables you to probe, but a problem also can rob you of who, who you are. And in the word problem, you find the word me. So you probe to not be robbed of the me that you are. You, you understand? Huh. You probe not to be robbed of the me that you are. And in the word problem, you'll find a lot of interesting words within that word that, that can show you what it really is and what it really does. Hmm. I'm just writing that down because okay. you said you probe not to, not to, not to be, you probe not to, not to rob, not to rob the of the me that you are. Yes. Okay. And because again, our, con our, our consciousness, my, 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 my goal in this life is to expand my mind and be able to accomplish certain things in, in my lifespan that I will feel like I've done it when I'm not in a physical form anymore, when I'm in a spiritual form that's part of all that is. But our, our minds can do amazing things. And all we have to do is tr train up our minds in the way they shall go. And when we get deeper, we won't depart from it. I just changed the scripture a little bit. But <laughs> it's really... But if you think again, if you, you know, you can't make meditate. If you make meditating hard before you start, it's gonna be hard. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like when you when you see this beautiful woman walking down the street, and you don't know her, and she don't know you, but she's gorgeous, she's fine, and you just make up your mind right there. That's mine. That's my woman. And you walk across that street, and you you're a little nervous, but then you've made up your mind. And if it, and, and, and you, you and then you catch her, you get the number, and you're dating. And you could have made your mind up and said, you know, I ain't going over there. She ain't gonna she ain't gonna give me the time today. But you believed it. And and not only did you believe it, you you caught her. And and that's that's what thinking is, is bringing it to fruition, whatever it is. Well, you just give us some you good you just give us some 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 dating tips right there, Tony. You know that? I remember Steve. I remember him from last time, right? Yeah. Yeah, my brother's back. But it's the same principle in all things. It's like you know what you want, go get it. You know, because it's, it's already you know consciousness is you. You let's go back to the plane. You see yourself in Hawaii. You got on the plane. You see yourself there. That's the end of the journey. And so life is about how you get there. You, you can take a plane, you can take a bus, you can, well, go to Hawaii, you gotta take a plane, you take a boat. But you're, you see the destination and how you get there is the journey. And in journey, we find the joy. So life, life's the ultimate trip. Okay, uh, I'll, 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 share, share, I'll share an example uh, right here from Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard was uh, trained by um, by um, Abdullah. Abdullah was his was a master, right? He 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 he, he taught Neville Goddard how to how to um, see things in the end, right? So um, Abdullah ne Neville wanted to go to um, um, Baha no, no is it Bahamas? Ba 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 yeah yeah. You are in Barbados. He wanted to go to Barbados, right? So Abdullah told him, you are in Barbados. So he said, I'm in Barbados. He said, yes, you are in Barbados. So he taught him to see the end of the journey even before, you know, because that's what he wanted. He wanted to go to Barbados. So, and he told him, you're going to Barbados on first class. End of story, right? So, but Neville was still young and we didn't know how, you know, the, the law of mind worked. So um, um, he, he um, came to um, Abdullah and said, well, something happened and they now found a seat for me on the plane 
but um, it's not first class. So Abdullah was a little bit, you know, um, well, the word will be, he was a little bit, he, he was teaching Neville, so he didn't answer Neville. He just said, you are in Barbados and left it alone and walked away. So, and to make this long story short, Neville ended up going to Barbados. The way circumstances and things happened, he went to Barbados on first class, just like Abdullah told him. So, see, when you see the end, you see the end and, and you stay with the end in your imagination. That's how you attract these things, okay? Now, when I said faith, that's where the faith that comes in to know that what you want to manifest in your life is going to happen and you waver not. You do not waver from the end uh, of your destination. That is um, um, one good use of the imagination. And when we, when, when this, this, this part of the use of imagination has nothing to do with whether it's, you know, when we talked about autopilot or no auto, uh, autopilot, you remember when I told you that when, 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 you, when you have your, your destination set, it's like you, you're locked into autopilot. So when I was saying that faith is not wavering in what you have already, um, what you want to manifest, because you know you can derail, you can derail what you want to manifest when you start to doubt. That's why I said nothing is ordained or pre, no, nothing is preordained in life. We create whatever our circumstances we face or we, we attract to us by the way we think, by our mind, by ourselves. But if you, if you want to manifest something and you see the end from the beginning and stay and do not waver, that is how you will get that thing that you want. And these things come with practice and training. It's just, the use of the mind and thinking is practice and training. The mind, it, it, you, you train the mind just like how you train the muscles. When you, the first time you go to the gym, you're not going to lift 200 pounds if, you never, if you've never lifted 200 pounds before. But when you start with 10, 20, 30, 40, you work your way up. That is how the mind works. That's how thinking works. That's how you learn to meditate. The first time you meditated, you didn't meditate and you succeeded at not thinking. You, because you kept doing it and practicing your muscle, you got better and stronger. That's how you train your mind. I love it. It is so true. It's so true because so, it's so true what he wrote. Yes. Also, meditation also helps you. You can have faith on your journey, but it's about allowing, not hmm. even actually going with the flow. It's allowing, and you're meditating so that you it helps you in your decision making to make more divine decisions because you can meet people along the way who will guide you a different way than you thought you were going to go, and you end up going left, which is a wonderful thing, because you meet this other person or that person, and you get to where you're going. You know, life really is about the the journey. And I've, I've heard the Neville, I've, I've, I've heard the Neville Goddard story, and it's on YouTube. He, he tells it really, in a really good way. So, but, but me, I, I don't really... I have not really done all that kind of studying more so than, you know, I've worked with Maury's wife and different people who've been so brilliant and they've just taken me under their wing. Maury's wife, what, what, what is Maury's wife's technique? Well, Maury's wife is the founder of Earth, Wind & Fire. Oh, okay. And so his technique was he studied religions and mysticism and well, religions you did and coming from a hip place, all these things helped. Find your, your inner self. Have mercy this evening. I'm quoting from his, the song All About Love. Mm. And so and so I've learned about all these things. And this is what I put in what I write. But your mind is a powerful tool. And, True. And when people say, 
I made up my mind. I'm, I, I got my mind set on it. It's all in the mind. They don't say I made up my conscious mind. They made up, I mean, their subconscious mind. They made up their conscious mind to consciously follow something. Because your subconscious mind, again, it's already there. It's already in Hawaii. It's already, so if you want to be a billionaire, mm -hmm. you act like you act like a billionaire now. You, you already do the things so that the universe goes, hey, Ike's a billionaire. So let me throw in this situation. He, let me throw in more of what he feels because everything is about where you are in your mind. That is true. Say, He's crazy in his mind. So, because your, your mind <laughs> makes it real. That is true. So, that is true. I saw these gold albums before I even had one. Wow. I saw, my, I saw myself with them. Mm. And so, it's like I, I see myself winning. Emmys and Oscars before it even happens. You have to see it. That is true. When you, see, when you see it, you're already there. So whether you, it's like whether you're there physically or there in your mind, doesn't make a difference to the universe as long as you're there. Well, so, well, what, what, well, seeing yourself there in your mind is the most important thing because it doesn't matter where you are in the physical. I'm gonna give you the key word. When you see it in your mind, then you're in alignment. And when mm. you're in alignment, mm. everything comes to you because you're in alignment with it. And the, and the old black folks used to say, boy, get your ducks in a row. Mm. When your ducks are in a row, they're in what? They're in alignment. In alignment. Which means you're in alignment. So when you're in alignment with your purpose and your destination, then the law of attraction and the universe conspires todos juntos together to give it you what it is you desire. Tony, you know what we need to do? We need to create the law of attraction for the hood, hood the hood version of law of attraction, because what uh, everything you say <laughs> is on point, is on point, but we need to break it down, you know, in, <laughs> in the hood language. <laughs> All people got to do is go to YouTube and watch, you know, Abraham Hicks. Watch Esther Hicks do Abraham, and that's that's pretty pretty plain and clear. You know, we don't need a hood. We can do no, it. no. It it it, it 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 it's like um, think and grow rich. You know, the 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 the, the I guess the hood version will be. You see, because there's there's a lot of. See, there's, there's, um, see, when you want to manifest things, right? There's no one way to manifesting things. It's just, but the, the, the end product is you have to see things in your mind. However, it gets to your mind, uh, that just get it there through whatever language, you know, the, the, the basic manifestation is the same thing. You have to see things in your mind's eye to bring it into physical manifestation. But see, um, it's just like if you if you told somebody from, let's say, uh, I'm going to use Africa, you know, you tell, tell somebody from Africa um, about, say, the, the, the vortex. If it's a word I've never heard of before, but the vortex, you could, could be, you know, we have another word that we use for the vortex. Of course, of course. Exactly, because if you don't understand what you're doing, you might still be doing it, but not 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 think that you're doing it right. But the the the, the result you're getting results, you're getting results. It is it, is it, if if I if I if I if I if I if I teach what I know in. The, the the law of mind to um, let's say an average um, African. I'm not going to use a lot of the words that I use to an American because they can relate to those kind of things. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, no, wait, that's so that's what, what I'm talking about. That's, 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 uh, that's huh? marketing. That's marketing. That's already understood. That's that you know. So don't. You don't have to even go there because that's just marketing. We, you, of course you would. You're going to make it work. For the audience, that's just that's just of course. Right, right, 
All right. Anyways, I like I like um I like what you 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 you, you said about um the founder of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Right now, how does how does creativity or the law of mind work when you want to create um, things like music? You know, um, I'm I'm sure I'm sure. Um, would I? I would say hundred percent of the artists they get their their music from from the divine, right? From their creative um, juices. It comes. That's where all inspiration comes from. For 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 you to write you music. It depends. You can see a, you can see a person who never played a piano before sit down and and not come up with anything, or a person who never played a guitar. Some things you got to practice and do. You know, you're, where you get your creativity from is based on what source you tap into. You tap into a higher source, but that also means you've, you've learned how to play an instrument. You've, you've put some work into it. And the, the more energy you put into something, the better you get. That's just, now, this is just more common sense. Uh, you know, you just can't sit down and be Picasso. So you actually got to do and practice things, you know, learn music, learn things. And some people just can play and can tap into something. So it, it's an individual question, you know, um, to really answer. But you eventually tap into something deeper as you continue to shuffle. So as you continue to shovel, as you continue to build, eventually you tap into something deep. But that comes with getting out there with your shovel. So getting your ink pen, getting your, your paper, getting your instrument. And so the more you tap into your instrument, the more you tap into the source. Whatever, whatever that source is, I'm not going to limit it by saying, you know, it's this or that. So it's, it's divine, it's, it's spiritual, it's higher, it's lower. Because some people tap into a source that's dark. You know, and that's out there. They tap into it. So there's many sources to tap into. But we, but the, the thing you learn above all else is there's something greater than ourselves hmm. to tap into. And what, and what you tap into becomes what you vibrate with or what you're in alignment with. Because there's good, there's bad, there's evil, there's dark, there's light, there's funny. It's an infinite amount of sources. The trick of everything in life is to open your mind enough. Because you, you're only, your God is only as smart as you are. Hmm. Some people got a stupid got a stupid God because they're stupid. And so they say, you know, my God is this and that. And man, he's kind of stupid. So his God is kind of stupid, but that kind of matches him. So our God is only going to be as smart and as brilliant as we allow ourselves. Because if we, 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 mean, we mean a God that's so smart we can't really figure it out. We ain't going to gravitate to that God because that God is greater than who we are. And it's funny how our gods are always as smart as we are, are as dark as we are, are as dumbass as we are. Because wow. It's about <coughs> how, how, how deep in the rabbit hole can you be? And that's what your God becomes because we make up our God. Mm. We make him up. Mm. We come to this world with God as a part of us already. But mm. we forget that, then we gotta go on this journey and, and we got to become enlightened and we got to become aware and got to be tapped into source when we're already in the source, but we're going back to where we are. But mm. then, you know, there's a lot of people who got a dumbass God. And it, cause they're basically dumbass. And it, you know, wow. it, but you know, they don't get a sophisticated God till they open up their mind. And, and, and when you expand, that's why it's called expanding consciousness, why it's called enlightenment. That's literally walking into a dark room and flipping on the switch. Hmm. And so you only get there. God is revealed. That's right, Linda Ovando. <laughs> Linda. <You know? laughs> oh, well, um, well, this, this, this is this, this was. Um, um, if I if I if I if I say um, my, you uh, you you you. What, 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 what happens is, here, let me tell you something. People, we say we're all connected. Right. We are all connected. You you, you 
already connected to God and to source what you call God, how you define God becomes limited because we are limited beings, even though we're unlimited. Again, if you're only using 2% of your brain, that's 98% of the God in you waiting for you to tap into it. Well, <laughs> well, I, well, this is what I'll say, though. Um, we, we limit ourselves by the way we think, and we limit the God in us. The God in us is not limited. You know, he's infinite, all-knowing God, right? And, 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 and the God in you says you can meditate one time if you want to, because you're not limited by thinking that you're limited and can't meditate. Well, it's the God in you pulling your coattail. Well, okay, God, you, God is in every human being. The God force is in every human being. And um, the first time I heard this, I, um, I um, almost... Um, just turned off my my uh, my uh, my phone because it was strange to me, and that's when I heard that God is your human imagination. And when you think about it, is there? There's nothing that was created that wasn't first imagined. Exactly. And that is God. That the and not. Yes, God is your human imagination. That's the, that's the being in you that, that creates everything on earth. And whether it's evil or good, is still God. Remember the Bible says, I kill and I give life. So when, even when man is thinking of all the evil and all the, all the bad things, it's still God. He's just using that God force for evil. But God is still the one in operation. So, however, when we, when we become aware and elevate to a higher consciousness and learn to use our, the, 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 our higher faculties, we become closer to God and more or let me let me say we become more of who we are supposed to be you know because um when you now understand that whatever you do to the next man you do to yourself and another way to put this is do you know that everybody you deal with on earth is yourself pushed out when i heard this i i think i first heard this from reverend ike then I now heard this from Neville Goddard. I'm like, wow. Every human being, every person you deal with is yourself pushed out. It's just a version of yourself that you haven't, that you just, you, you, you learning to deal with. So, uh, that you haven't met yet. Correct. So, so that's why when we, we, when we now start to practice to love, which is the greatest commandment on earth, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. Because when you love your neighbor, you cannot hurt your neighbor. When you, you cannot, you, you, nobody, well, maybe some people want to hurt themselves, but in the ideal world, nobody wants to hurt themselves, right? We want to protect and care for ourselves. So that's when we become, when we evolve and become um, uh, more like God. More like who you already are. Exactly. When you realize once you awaken and realize that you already are, life is just a full circle. Hmm. That's why when you that's why when you're a baby, you got no teeth and you can't control yourself. When you're an old person, you got no teeth and you can't control yourself. It's just a full circle. You go back to where you started. Hmm. And it's so beautiful. And so that we come to this world and we don't know anything and hmm. we die. And we know everything once once we close our eyes and we walk into the light. But it's just this is just for us to figure out what we're gonna be and just to experience what we created of ourselves to be. And everybody wants to love somebody. Everybody has in their DNA the capacity to love, to laugh, to smile, everything. And everybody's journey is different. Hmm. And the whole the whole thing about life is to find the love. And to be the love. Mm. But before you get there, you're going to find the hate. You're going to find the opposite of everything that you 
want because it makes what you want even better. Mm. It's like you, your kid's 16, you want to go buy him this new Porsche, and you know they're going to wreck it when you buy it. So, you know, they go, you have them go get a job at McDonald's and what they got to go do, and they go buy a little jalopy. And they, and they treat that jalopy so, so well because they had to go earn it and work for it and go through everything. And that's the same with our success. If we didn't, if we didn't have to, we didn't get turned down and we didn't get the door closed on us, the, the end result wouldn't be as sweet. So on that trip to Hawaii that you took, if you didn't have that turbulence, if you didn't have that, all the stuff on the plane that threw you off course, by the time you got to Hawaii, what you say, which, what you say when you get off that airplane and you, they say aloha, you're going to say, thank God, thank you, Jesus, thank you this. Because if the trip was not was not what it was, but I knew it was going to make it, and I'm just so grateful that I made it to Hawaii, you kissed the ground. So life is about the challenges, the, the negativity, the bad people, the haters. All that makes you love your destination hmm. even more. Makes you love your inner self even more. Makes you love your higher self anymore. So when people say, they say, they're bringing me hell. The devil is on me. All this stuff. Be grateful for it. That's what's going to make you who you are. It's going to make you tough. Sharpen you up. But the key is it's going to make you grateful. Hmm. So when you get to where you're getting, you ain't going to embarrass God. Mm. You ain't going to embarrass your higher self by doing some dumb shit when you get there. So everything that is makes you and chisels away all of the, the rough edges to make you smooth. Mm. Makes you smooth. Makes you smooth. You that, know? that is so true. I, I and, told, and, and, mm -hmm. and that's true, Steve. Truth has no opposite. Mm. It that, has no opposite. Truth just is. But in the word truth, you find the word hurt. So truth does have pain to it. Mm. That's why for when you hear the truth so truth opposite is the hurt within the word itself but the hurt just brings you the joy hmm. and in the word we find the rut and the root to where you are but in truth you find the th that's tony haynes and tony haynes is in the truth that's some poetry right there <laughs> that was good tony <laughs> well well, well, that is that is so true. Uh, uh, how you put it, I, I love that. Um, see, the universe. You, and, the, and truth is a hut we live in. Truth is a hut we live in. Hmm. Hut is also a truth. So I had to go one more. Right, right, right. I right. appreciate it. See, the the the, the universe. Um, wants everybody to succeed. Wants us all to be to be successful. But see. We got to learn to handle this success. You know, like like if if somebody somebody cannot handle one thousand dollars, how are you going to handle one million dollars if it's even if it's dumped on your lap? Is you're just going to like squander it? It's going to be gone before you know it. Is That's that why. Question? Huh? Question or no, no, no. It, 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 it's a statement. It's a statement because okay. Okay, what good. what is the good. statistics good. of people that win the lottery? You know. Um, the statistics is that after within seven years they go back to being broke, right? Because they've never learned to handle money on that level. So you find that the universe wants everybody to, to be to 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 be successful, but we got to train our mind, train ourselves to get to be to be able to handle whatever it is we want in life. So that's the journey, you know. You you learn, and and, and once you, it, it's just like um um, I think um. I, I don't remember, I don't remember exactly who who said this, but if if you if you want to have a beautiful home, you got to learn to clean up the one that you are in. You know that's how you can get a beautiful home. Again, that's just hmm. plain old gratitude. Be grateful. Hmm. And so, but anyway, that's all. That's all part of the journey. But that's the key to everything. But how do you become grateful? Again, that's why we have so much shit in our lives, because the universe knows we got to get gratitude. You get gratitude based on what you've overcome, and you're thankful that you made it out. And that's why, especially black people, we go through so much, because we got to be grateful. And, and the grateful spirit and the grateful heart gets more things added to it to where it can get something, you know? Right. So... Right. That's why you know. Thanks. 
given it every day. Hmm. That is so true. That that is so true. That is so true. Well, uh, uh, well, um, Tony, I've enjoyed your company. Uh, we 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 talked about going for an hour. I think we've gone over an hour, but um, it's been a wonderful conversation. Wonderful, uh, one insightful conversation. And um, do you do you have any last words to to to, to say before we we wrap up this uh, edition? Everybody who came in, thank you so much. You know, Linda, Ovando, uh, Massage by um, Regina, and my my uh, Tasha, Donna. Everybody, thank you. I really appreciate. I'm grateful that you came. And, and brother, I just have a great one. I got to go take care of my five boys. Now I got to go over to the uh, foster care center. And go do my night thing and check out my boys. Well, I appreciate you, Tony. Uh, whoever, whoever um, you didn't mention the name, whoever's name was not mentioned, please don't feel uh, slighted. It's not uh, in any way. We did not want to um, slight you. I thank Harinda. Harinda is um, Harinda is a very good, good. Uh, yeah. Magdalena D. Swoosh. D. Swoosh is my cousin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was his family. He's actually expecting a baby soon. I think by next month. Uh, Excellent. Path, Path, Path Kurani, thank you for joining. Juan, thank you for joining. We appreciate you. Tony, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. And um, I hope yeah. we've been able to share some um, some some truth and some good good information about about the journey. Let's talk in a few days, my brother. Much love to you. Keep it going. All right, sir. Thank you very much, guys. Have a very good night. God bless. All right. Bless you. All right. So, people on Facebook, thank you for joining. Uh, even though you couldn't see Tony, um, but you heard the audio. So, thank you for joining. And um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, podcast tonight. And I'll bring you another topic, another edition of um, The Mind of Steel in... Um, in a few days. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye. Keep watching The Mind of Steel on Steel TV.